June 23rd, Rotoball Patch Compound. Got a good video in store for you folks today. I've done a lot of labor and there's been a lot of growth on these plants and a lot of things have changed since the 10 days has passed since the last video. Hold tight, you're gonna see some cool stuff. As usual, let's start up at our stop sign patch where we have our 150 square foot plant, 1229.7 Burchette, and our Andrew Vale watermelon which is really coming to its own check out the stump nice clean traditional stump and i'm keeping it nice and airy that's that's what you're supposed to do with those gals no table covers or any of that nonsense you want to have direct sunshine and not even be covered up by leaves just keep it as dry and healthy as possible i didn't have any fruit on this plant yet until today and i pollinated the little gal way out there and it's on the main fingers crossed i end up with something <laughs> because I'm, I'm waiting you know and here we are the 23rd and i've got a pretty decent sized plant um so i'm glad to finally have it going <laughs> the 150 plant we'll check out the side view here or we might even crawl in there a bit i'm completely terminated on that back half of the plant have the stump right around there the main runs out the first few secondaries all swoop back and are buried the other secondaries are swooped forward now i'm going to try to carry on either side of that scale that's right that's right there's a scale there we'll talk about that in a second but on each side of that scale i'm trying to carry two secondaries this side and the other side secondaries let's walk around and check out that stump real quick before we crawl into this patch Got a fan running 24 7. She's just shaking and wobbling. But way underneath there, if we can get to it, there's our stump. Nice and dry. Real good and dry. And you look at the, the soil and the rest of the patch, and it's quite moist. We've been fighting a lot of heat. So I've been keeping things a little bit wetter than normal, which is, <laughs> is worrisome because that's when you start inviting rot. And I've had a few little tiny rod areas that I've caught early that have been able to treat or cut off and not necessarily save the season, but prevent further problems. This plant's been wonderful. Her collar's right. There's no other way to put it. I'm staying within the boundaries. We're hugging the line, <laughs> oh, which is great. Got my walking boards out. Our field pumpkin is starting to actually look like a pumpkin plant which is great it might actually be a pumpkin plant at some point i've got our structure up this one's a little bit different than my traditional structures this is a little bit flatter ground so i arched up the canopy by using pvc zip tied to my t-post by you can a few other folks do that just kind of props things up gives a better rain shed who cares about that rain shed let's talk about that fruit yeah she is oh let's see today is dap eight on this gal uh, which is great i got an eight pound fruit and a dap eight whether it's eight pounds or not it's questionable because we do have a table big cloth and some brick <laughs> we was talking earlier about our two running here's two skirting the scale move to the other side skirting the scale two of them here which is nice hopefully we run those gals on out underneath this walking board and fill in that last little bit of real estate on the other side of that fan so I went ahead and turned the fan off so we could talk about this scale and the setup this is a four by four diamond plate scale usa scales makes this one uh it was purchased on the cheap it's a nice little scale it's heavy mercy is it heavy this is not a one-man operation to move it to the patch i did move it to the patch one man style because i'm i'm more than one man <laughs> at least i had to be in this situation uh, i have a green board underneath because i don't want my fruit setting directly on steel and then i have two sheets of mill fabric 
uh, that sheet hugs the green board and then an overlayment here. That way, if I decide to tug the fruit any this season, I can slide very nicely. The fruit is a 5.5 lober. I've got a little bonus goofy lobe down there. Not a big deal. You see that checking there too, coming off the blossom. That doesn't get me excited either. I get that every year on my fruit. These girls want to grow and they just about rip themselves apart. Same thing with this stem. Just tries to rip itself apart. Underneath, if we can get to it, kind of can. Yeah, you see a little bit there. Try to rip itself apart from the bottom side. They grow at such a rate that it's, it's just, they're damaging to themselves or they can be. I went ahead and cut off the secondary on this fruit and that was from earlier damage from hell i think i had that in a video last time uh, it just needed to go so this is our one shot luckily it's set for us and we actually have a pretty decent fruit you know for a dab bait the main vine is is brought up we don't have obviously we're not rooted in here we're not rooted in there that one is rooted in but tugged up so it, it I broke a lot to, to pull it up. I'm not a big fan of that, but I want to put her on a scale. All right, <laughs> on to the main patch. Oh, frostbite, old oh, girl. What do you say? I'm doing real good, Chris. Yeah, you sure are. Keep up the good work at drawing insects to you with those beautiful blossoms of yours and not to the main patch. Thank you. All right. That's enough of that nonsense. Let's get this gate open and look some some vegetation real quick. Start at the 2365. She's cupped up. Wants the rain. Good and moist in here. And if you notice a big difference is I've got a lot of shade fabric on this patch. Goodness. It has been just painfully hot. West Virginia, especially my portion of West Virginia is it's driest June of record thus far. No, I don't know if there's been any measurable rain whatsoever. And that's just the way it goes. You're gonna have different obstacles every season and how you respond to them and what you do is gonna dictate how well your plants turn out. I mean, I've got holes everywhere in these early leaves from a nasty hailstorm, and I'm not giving up. I've stripped off a lot of foliage which is atypical, very atypical of a, a June, a mid-June for my patch. And I've got a few more that's gonna to have to go soon. The heck with that, let's check out this stump. The stump looks good, she's nice and fat. Uh, bigger than a can of soda. And comes out of the ground good and clean. The main's dry. If you look real close, you can look at my soil. Dry, 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 around. The stump, dry, dry, dry. Let's zoom you back in. It's awfully close, Chris. There we go. But as soon as you get outside of it, oh, we're good and moist. Yeah. And the whole thought process is behind that is I like to keep this moist and wet, this moist and wet, this dry. Because if this gets a rot spot, game over. This gets a rot spot. Oh no, I've lost the secondary. Now, it happens. You lose that main, you lose everything. On to the 1965.5 Roadfall Stump. Oh, passing by the night shift guard. Midnight. You gonna catch me something tonight, Midnight? No, I'm not. I've caught everything already. That's what I like to hear. That's a good cat. It's the 1965 similar setup good and moist and then dry dries within reason have a little bit of weed pressure need to get by you could come by and do some weeding for me <laughs> I know I can't ask Jeff to do it he doesn't know how to do it mains a little bit smaller on this one just a hair under a soda can that hole <laughs> that we originally had still kind of there. She's just gnarled up. Hold stump. Main's good and dry the whole way down. Fabric's doing its job keeping the weeds off. 
you get directly underneath the canopy and it's like oh boy chris you got some issues there and it seems to be that crab grass type of grass i get i could probably not mess with it all season and get away with it but at some point i'll probably trace out there in the next couple weeks and and address it well people like salad but boy do they like fruit let's go check out on fruit oh sorry cat let's walk underneath this shade fabric to get ourselves there kind of cool it's not real tall so it massages the top of my scalp as I walk through <laughs> I'm on the soil now look how dry we are down here guys Woo. it's dry 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 there I say bone dry and you can see my watering pattern I should probably I water a little bit further out uh, on every area but this area dries this continues to stay good and moist in that V pattern and it's about the foliage you know it's a natural block of the Sun so it shades it and you look at this this particular shot it's like man that looks gorgeous and it does look gorgeous uh, you never even know I didn't have hail isn't that right midnight Let's look at fruit. The porch pumpkin, keeping her contained kind of small. This is a 10 by 20 area. And I'd say I have about 10 by 15 filled in with plant. Keeping a fan even on its stump. Treating it somewhat respectable. DAP 15 pollination on this gal. This is the 2025 point seven road ball nice big fruit very nice need a bigger table is what I need <laughs> let's see if we can get this table off safely I might pause this for a second all right unpause unpause plant a little shortened up here a little shortened on that side I had a deer jump my fence guys can you believe that ate this porch pumpkins burnt leaves <laughs> that's what it ate how cool is that of all the things didn't stomp this beautiful fruit and chew on it any ate the the leaves instead so i got very lucky and fortunate there happy with this gal for a depth 15 for her size that's a that's a big fruit off of a, a little plant and i think that she will make a wonderful wonderful addition to my porch yeah, Midnight says nobody cares about the porch pumpkins. Everybody wants to hear about what's sitting on those scales, Doc. So let's talk about them scales. This is the 1965.5 Rotoball. She's on a scale. She's DAP 15, like everything in this lower patch, pollinated on June 8th. Reads 32 pounds. I'd say at least 20 of that's fan at this point. I've got a tarpaulin structure up with t-posts as per usual and then i have a sheet draping to keep the sun blocked a little bit i've yet to touch this pumpkin with any type of sheets the only touching has been just moving it and maneuvering it by hand early on trying to get a a good lay stem to blossom which i did fair at i'm still tipped a little bit towards the blossom which that's just the way I grow. I can't help it. I tried my best to level this gal out, and here we are. We're going nosedive now, aren't we? But she is a nice, good-looking, healthy DAP 15. Stem side, got big crazy splits, but healing. And we have a fan 24-7 blowing at that blossom in, just kind of hitting everything. As for the main, we're tapped in back about three away, which is great for me. I got this scale low to the ground this year. She's low in the back and she's high up front because I, I grow on a hillside, guys. All right, let's go check out the 2365. Oh, 2365 side angle. She's also on a scale. Everything's on scale. Fan rolling on this one, 24 seven. Same setup, tarpaulin. If we ever decide to get rain it'll be coming it'll come in handy at keeping things dry and then nice sheet mid strung halfway over top of fruit let's see if we can crawl in and get a look at this fruit good looking fruit as well 
Oh, it's hard on my knees. Bear with me, guys. Because I don't like to stand on it. Stem looks good on this gal. A couple little pops and cracks. I cut that top leaf off. It was a healthy leaf. It just didn't fit with the growth, so it had to go. Oh. I didn't even see the weight on this one. Let's hop off and look at weight. Nobody cares about what a fruit looks like. They care about weight. Oh, she's 44 pounds. And I'd say at least 10 of that is that sensor there. So, <laughs> 34 pounds. A little bit more about plant. Main right vine runs down and then secondaries come off. And I have one, two, three, four secondaries that'll drape here where midnight is all the way on down and fill the rest of this real estate. On the other side, I have five secondaries counting the main vine. That's our main vine running here. And those will drape down here. Run the same pattern over here. Got a total of four here and then five on that side. At some point, we'll start terminating these ones. I'm gonna try to let these guys go indefinitely in essence and just fill up all this area. Not as much real estate to give on the Rota ball as we have with the 1960 or with the, the, the wolf, excuse me. Tomato plants have got a massive trim. I have been neglecting them because I've been working so hard in the pumpkin patch. So it will be a miracle if I'm able to sneak out a five pounder this year because they need rain, they need water, and I don't have time for that nonsense when I got all that nonsense up there. This patch has a total of six fans running in it right now. Every plant has a fan on the stump and a fan on the fruit. I wanna keep things cool as possible. Daytime temperatures in this nonsense. Yesterday we were 91 ambient, uh, and it's 91 underneath there. Direct sun, I'd say the heat index would have been a heck of a lot higher. You'd fry everything. That's been the, the hottest day I've had in two years, and I was sweating bullets like I'm sweating bullets now, talking about it, and I'm glad to make it through it. All right, folks, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this week's patch tour. You see, we got a lot done. Getting scales underneath everything. It's a lot of labor up front, but I think it'll pay me dividends as the season rolls on, especially with the 150 plant. Hey, midnight. <laughs> I hope you continue to follow along. Hope you learned something this week. If you didn't learn something, then that's okay too, as long as you're entertained a little bit. My looking forward for the next two weeks is accelerated growth i want to see these fruit continue to perform better and better and better every day the scale gives me an accurate measurement of that which is nice and i will continue to read and feed my foliage for my fruit that's something i do i try to do all season a fair bit of secondaries have been ended on the back half of the plant which is good i still have a few there on every plant except for the 150. Uh, once those are finally termed, you know, we'll have a total of nine secondaries running forward on the plants with those being termed. Mostly up until about day 70 with any luck if they continue to grow and they don't fizzle out. Long video, a lot to show. Next week's going to be even more stuff and hopefully a heck of a lot bigger fruit, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, catch you at the scales. Dock out.